Welcome to Fort Vancouver's Lost and Found. With Lost and Found, we hope you learn more about life in the village by seeing and hearing the stories of some of the artifacts that have been unearthed by Fort Vancouver's expert team of archaeologists. Let's take a look at some of the artifacts and see what they tell us about the lives of the people who live there. S-hooks were a common household item. This hook was made from iron and could be used to hang a variety of items including tea kettles and pots over an open fire. The Hudson's Bay Company trade axe was an essential tool in the fur trade and equally important for domestic use. The axe was frequently used to chop firewood for household warmth and preparation of food. This two-tined fork was very common at Fort Vancouver. It was made from iron and had a decorative bone handle. Occasionally, possessions like dinner plates and cups were heirlooms brought into the fort from Europe. People living in the village had spode plates and cups purchased from the company store. The blue transfer print was popular among women in the village. Rum could be purchased from the company store and came in a dark olive green bottle, which aided in the preservation of its contents. This was a common household item in both the fort and the village. Pipes and tobacco were very common throughout the village and could be purchased at the company store. Most people smoked at Hudson's Bay Company establishments, including the Indian and Matisse wives of the employees. It was common for people to break off the pipe stems and leave them in piles around social gathering spots. This thimble was a hallmark of the fur trade culture. Thimbles were a simple tool in European society, but at Fort Vancouver they also became a decorative item favored by the Indian and Matisse women in the area. Many belief systems existed in the fort, but Roman Catholicism was the most prevalent. Crosses were used in everyday life as decoration and for religious ceremonies such as baptism, marriage, and burials. Several items found around the house are fairly non-gender specific, but this hair ornament is evidence of a female presence in the home. This intricate ornament was made from horn and dates back to the 1850s. Here we have further evidence that there was a woman living in the home. Blue buttons like these were almost exclusively used and worn by women. We hope you enjoyed your time with Lost and Found. As you've seen, the items here have many stories to tell and can teach us about the lives of the villagers who called the fort their home over 150 years ago.